Hi there, I'm Georgina, Head of the Student Success Teams here at Career Foundry. Today we're going to explore the fascinating history of user experience design. Before we jump in, let's consider what the term UX design actually means. User experience refers to any interaction a user has with a product or service, like an app or a website. Is the product easy to navigate? Is it easy to find the information you need and to complete your desired tasks? User experience design considers each and every element that shapes the user experience. It's all about creating products and features that are relevant, logical, and a pleasure to use. Cognitive psychologist Don Norman coined the term user experience in the 1990s, but UX predates its name by quite some decades. So where does the concept of UX come from? What factors and forces have shaped UX design as we know it today? Let's find out. The origins of UX can be traced as far back as 4000 BC to the ancient Chinese philosophy of feng shui. Feng shui literally translates as wind and water. It refers to the spatial arrangement of objects in relation to the flow of energy. In practice, Feng Shui is all about arranging your surroundings in the most optimal, harmonious or user-friendly way. Just as an interior designer might arrange the furniture so that it's easy for people to navigate the room, a UX designer applies similar principles to the task of creating a mobile app. The end goal is the same, to create an intuitive, user-friendly experience. In this respect, you could say that Feng Shui was one of the earliest nods to UX as we know it today. The origins of UX can also be traced right back to ancient Greece. There is evidence to suggest that, as early as the 5th century BC, Greek civilizations designed their tools and workplaces based on ergonomic principles. What does that have to do with UX? Well, ergonomics, otherwise known as human factors, is a scientific discipline which considers how humans interact with other elements of a system. Applying ergonomic principles helps to design and optimise human well-being and overall system performance. Not too dissimilar from user experience design. And how do we know that the ancient Greeks were aware of ergonomic principles? One of the strongest indications is a text written by Hippocrates describing how a surgeon's workplace should be set up. He advises that the surgeon's tools must be positioned in such a way as to not obstruct the surgeon and also be within easy reach when required. Sounds a lot like UX, doesn't it? Fast forward a few thousand years to meet Frederick Winslow Taylor, a mechanical engineer and pioneer of Taylorism, otherwise known as scientific management. On a mission to make human labour more efficient, Taylor conducted extensive research into the interactions between workers and their tools. In 1911, he wrote The Principles of Scientific Management, based on his theory that systematic management is the solution to inefficiency. Taylorism was widely criticised for the way it reduces people to mere cogs in a machine. However, Taylor's focus on optimising the relationship between humans and their tools is certainly reminiscent of some key UX principles. The next step in our timeline takes us to the 1940s. Continuing on the quest for workplace efficiency, Toyota developed their famous human-centred production system. Unlike Taylorism, the Toyota production system was based on respect for people, with plenty of focus on creating the optimal working environment. Not only that, human input was considered absolutely crucial. Toyota factory workers could even pull a cord to stop the assembly line if they had feedback or suggestions to improve the process. Like usability testing in action, this represents a key step in UX history as it really brought attention to the importance of putting the user first. No matter how advanced technology gets, its value is limited to its usability, and that's exactly what UX design is all about. Another key figure in the history of UX design is Henry Dreyfus, an American industrial engineer who is renowned for designing and improving the usability of some of the most iconic consumer products, including the Hoover vacuum cleaner and the tabletop telephone. Dreyfus's design philosophy was based on common sense and scientific approaches. In 1955, he wrote Designing for People, which pretty much explains UX design in a nutshell. 
When the point of contact between the product and the people becomes a point of friction, then the designer has failed. On the other hand, if people are made safer, more comfortable, more eager to purchase, more efficient or just plain happier by the contact with the product, then the designer has succeeded. Well said, Mr. Dreyfus. Next stop, the mid-1960s. Engineers aren't the only ones who shaped the history of UX. It might not seem like the most obvious candidate, but Walt Disney is often hailed as one of the first UX designers in history. Disney was obsessed with creating magical, immersive, near-perfect user experiences. And the way he set about building Disney World was a true stroke of UX genius. Walt Disney issued the following guiding principles for his team of engineers, or Imagineers as he called them. Know your audience, wear your guests' shoes, and communicate with colour, shape, form and texture. Disney envisaged a place where the latest technology can be used to improve the lives of people, a vision that today's UX designers no doubt share. The 1970s kicked off the era of personal computers, with psychologists and engineers working together to perfect the user experience. Many of the most influential developments came out of Xerox's PARC Research Centre, such as the graphical user interface and the mouse. In many ways, PARC set the tone for personal computing as we know it today. And now over to Apple. In 1984, the original Macintosh was released, Apple's first mass-market PC featuring a graphical user interface, built-in screen and mouse. Since then, Apple has been a true innovator of user experience, from the first iPod in 2001 to the iPhone in 2007. The tech giant even had a hand in coining the term UX design. By the 90s, user experience design was very much happening. It just didn't have a name yet. Cue Donald Norman. Don Norman is a cognitive scientist who coined the term UX design. So how did it happen? In the early 90s, he joined the team at Apple as their user experience architect, making him the first ever person to have UX in his job title. He came up with the term user experience design as a way of encompassing all that UX is, in his own words. I invented the term because I thought human interface and usability were too narrow. I wanted to cover all aspects of the person's experience with a system, including industrial design, graphics, the interface, the physical interaction, and the manual. In 1988, Norman published The Psychology of Everyday Things, which was later updated to The Design of Everyday Things. This continues to be a UX design staple today. As we've seen, UX design is constantly evolving, and the fascinating journey continues, from artificial intelligence to voice technology, from virtual reality to design without interface, Today's UX designers face new challenges every day. Whatever the future holds, it's bound to be just as exciting as the history behind it. So there you have it, the fascinating history of user experience design. To learn more about UX, head on over to the Career Foundry blog or browse our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.